Cheaters. We all hate them, especially in competitive games. But how can we prevent them from cheating and still be able to play the game without stuttering and latency? If you would want to make sure that the players in your game cannot teleport anywhere they want, you would make the movement server authoritative. This means that the server will calculate the correct position for the user based on his inputs. But there is one problem with this approach and that is latency. The data doesn't get to the server instantly, it takes some time, so the movement of the player would be delayed. To make sure that the player moves instantly as he presses the keys, we can implement client prediction and reconciliation. These are some scary terms, I know, but what this means is that the player will change its position on its own, send data about his inputs and the new position to the server, and the server will check if the position is off, which could mean cheating or just bad physics calculation, if the position is correct, it will remain, but if it is wrong, the client will reconcile, meaning recalculate all of the wrong positions. The Unity project I'm using is still the same, it is the one where we have set up netcode along with the server authoritative movement. I have just separated all of the movement logic inside of the client movement prediction, so here we have some movement speed base, the animator, the rigid body, and we are calling the function move which is just getting the direction and then passing it into the move server RPC where all of the logic is happening on the server. Instead of moving the user through the server, which is causing all of the latency, we will just move the player locally, so this is actually client authoritative right now, but then the server is just going to check if the position is correct. To be able to reconcile or just recalculate all of the positions later, we will need to be storing some kind of buffer of all of the player inputs along with the positions that the player was in each of these states. I have added the movement data class, which will be containing some information about each of the states of the player. This includes the movement direction, which is just the input of the user, which will always be correct. The second one is the position, for which we will actually need to check on the server if it is correct or not. Then we also have a tick, which is kind of like a timestamp, which you will need to just identify when the player started cheating or when the position started to be off, and then we just need to reconcile it to the last tick. To be able to send the data across the network, so from the client to the server, we need this class to inherit from iNetwork Serializable and at this function where we are serializing all of the values that we have inside. I have added the movement data array, which will be storing all of the movement data of the user that we can then rewind back to if we need to, and this array has a fixed size of 1024 because if it would be a list and we would be constantly adding elements, it would definitely not be performant. Then we have some information about the ticks. So we have the tick rate for how many ticks we should have in one second, which usually is 60. Then we also need to know at which tick we currently are. We have the tick time, which in case that the tick rate is 60, will be 0.016, which is just the time of one tick. And then we have the time to which we will be adding the delta time, and if the time is greater than the tick time, we will just add new tick. And to make sure that we can use some of the extended functionality of netcode, I have just inherited this class from network behavior. And down here I have added some more functionality related to the ticks. So in the void awake, we are calculating the tick time, which is just one second divided by the ticks in one second. And then instead of calling all of the logic on update, I will be calling it on fixed update because we are using the physics, so that's a bit better. And in the fixed update, we are pretty much just increasing the ticks and calling the function move. And all of this should be happening only if we are the client and we are the owner, otherwise we can just return. I also forgot about the important part, which is the update. So in update, we are increasing the time, which we have for the ticks, by the delta time. So that then in the fixed update, we can check if the time that we have calculated is greater than the time of the tick. If this is true, then from the time we can just subtract the tick time and increase the current tick and we are just moving on each of the ticks. And with each of the tick, so every time we are calling the move function, we should update the movement data in the client movement data at the according tick. So in the client movement data array, at the current tick modulo by the buffer size, I'm just storing the current information, so I'm storing the current tick, the movement direction of the user, as well as the current position. The reason that we have the modulo here is because the array is not infinite, so we are kind of looping through it, which means that if we get to the end of the array, which is 1025, it will begin back from start, 
so if it is 1026, it will be on the index of 2, and so on. On the player object, I have added the client movement prediction script, and we can see that the current tick is squarely increasing, so about 60 times per second. We can also take a look into the client movement data, so we can see there is 1024 items, and if we check for one of these and just try moving for a second, we should see that as soon as it gets to the start of the array, yep, we can see that the movement direction has been updated, the tick as well, and the position too. So this information we'll later use to decide if the new position is correct or incorrect based on the input before. And you will also notice that on the host we can move fine, but on the client we cannot move, which is because we are no longer using the client network transform, so just instead of using network transform, adhere the client network transform. Just in case that you don't have the client network transform, the code for it is really simple, and back in Unity we can see the host can move, as usual, and the client as well. Let's now take a look at the move server RPC function, where we are going to receive the movement data, and we are just going to simulate the movement of the user based on the last movement data, and we are going to decide if the new movement data's position is correct or not. And so that the server can actually check if the position is correct or incorrect, we will need to add some kind of threshold, so I've just added a variable for the maximum position error. In the move server RPC function, I have added a parameter for the current movement data, from which we will be comparing the position, and we have the last movement data, which is just one tick older than the current movement data, so from this we will be getting the inputs and simulating the position. The code for calculating the position on your server should be the same as the code for calculating the movement on the client, so here I'm calculating the move vector and you can see that I'm doing it the same way that I have done it on the client, which is here, but in this case I'm just taking the last movement data and getting the movement direction. So we have the correct move vector, and then we actually want to manually simulate the physics, so for this we need to set the simulation mode to script, and then we can do whatever we want. So I'm setting the position of the user to the last movement data's position, because between the time that we are calling the RPC and when it's actually getting executed, there can be quite a lot of time, because the traveling of the data takes some time. So that's why we need to reset the position of the user back to the position from which we actually want to simulate, because if we wouldn't do this here, it would be simulating it with the new player position, but still using the old movement data. I'm then setting the velocity to the move vector, and we are manually simulating the physics with the fixed delta time, we are setting the correct position to the current position, and then I'm back resetting the player position, because here we set the position to the older position, just for the simulation, so then we can set it back to the start position, which I'm just caching before the simulation. And after we are done simulating, we can just set the simulation mode back to the fixed update. And then we can just check if the distance between the correct position we have simulated and the position from the current movement data is greater than the maximum position error, it means that the user has either cheated or the physics just wasn't calculated correctly. And then we actually need to call the server RPC, so before that I'm just returning if the current tick is less than 2 because we actually need to already have some current movement data and last movement data stored in the array. And then I'm just passing in the current movement data, so at the current tick, and the last movement data, so at the current tick, minus 1. So I can try just running around and it seems that the position is not off, and when I say the player is currently moving, and I just change the position to some totally different number, so this could simulate the cheating of the user, we can see that it said that the position is off. We can do the same thing for the client, so moving, nothing seems to be happening. And when I again change the position to some different number, we can see the position was off, which means that the user was cheating. So now we are able to detect if the position is off or not, and then we can just reconcile position of the player, so recalculate it to all of the correct positions. Here we have the function for the reconciliation, which will actually be happening on the client, because if it would all be happening on the server, there would be a lot of data that we would need to send back and forth. One of the parameters of this function is the activation tick, which is pretty much the tick from which we should start reconciling, because between the time that uh, user sent the data to the server, the server detected that we should do the reconciliation, and send the data back to the user has come a lot of time. 
So we'll definitely need to reconciliate more than let's say 10 or maybe even 100 of ticks. And the code for simulating the physics is pretty much the same as what we have here. So first I'm just setting the correct position to the position before we should have started reconciliating because we know that at the activation tick the position could already be wrong so we are taking it from the tick before that. Now I'm just setting the simulation mode to script. After the while loop I'm setting it back to the fixed tablet and in the while loop we are just re-simulating all of the positions that we should reconcile. In the while loop we are just reconciling until the activation tick is less or equal than the current tick and with each iteration I'm increasing the activation tick. And then simulating all of these positions is really almost the same what we had here. We are just accessing all of the data from the client movement data's array. And we cannot forget to call this RPC, so I'm doing this in the move server RPC when the position is off. So I'm just sending in the tick and we also need to know on which client we should call this RPC. So for this I'm creating the new RPC params and specifying the target client ID. And to know on which client we should call it, we need to grab the ID of the client that has called this server RPC. So if the client calls the server RPC, from the server RPC we then want to call the client RPC back on the same client. So that's why in the move server RPC I have a parameter called server RPC params in which when I'm calling it inside of the move function I'm just passing in the sender client ID which is the owner client ID so that we know who wanted to call this server RPC and then from the server RPC we can call the client RPC on the same client. Let's first try the reconciliation on the host. So this should be the host and I set it to zero. We can see that it kind of flickered for a second but this is because I'm just testing this locally so on the host there is really no delay. So I can try to do it million times per second and we can see the position is being reconciliated to the correct position, we can try it also on the Y and we cannot really even set it. So on the host it is working fine but always you should test your multiplayer games also for the clients and also push the game somewhere to a server and try it there. So let's see on the client if I set it to zero, yep we can see that it's also teleported but it is still happening instantly because we don't have any latency on the server but if we select the network manager we can actually give it some latency. So I will do delay of 200 milliseconds and let's say packet drop rate of 20%. So let's see for the client. We can see that the client is moving just fine, the movement is responsive and it, the player is just moving when I'm actually pressing the keys and on the host it is updating later but this is actually how the client prediction should work. In the same way if I'm moving on the host we can see that it's really responsive and on the other users it is happening a bit later. So let's try the reconciliation on the client. So that should be this one if I set it to zero. Now we actually need to wait for some time because it just takes some time for the data to travel from the client to the server and back. And yeah, that's just how we got our own client prediction and reconciliation working. The code that I have shown you is the most bare bones setup that I could come up with. So it is just 150 lines of code but there are definitely some bugs in it and it is definitely not optimized. For example, sending those two movement datas into the move server RPC can be quite costly because we are sending the data over a network. So ideally you would be just caching the data in an array on the server. To come up with this client prediction and reconciliation, it definitely took me more than 10 hours. I was watching multiple other tutorials, reading through some forms, and at first this topic seemed to be quite hard for me but then as I experimented with it, I just find, found my way through it. And while I was experimenting with this, I came up with so many issues that are related to the server and the client not being in sync, because everything on the network just takes some time, so I've really learned a ton of stuff. This is definitely not a final client movement and prediction you should be using in your commercial games, it is just for an experimentation and it's just an easy way that I try to set it up. And if you have any suggestions about how you would improve this code, then you can definitely let me know down in the comments. Feel free to check our Discord server, take a look at my Patreon. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp, or Bolt tutor, 
then I'm here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.